You see the title down below, folks, and you probably ask yourself, well, what does he mean by Transformer Zone controversy? Well, I'll explain. You see, Transformer Zone. Hold on for a second. Well, for those that don't know and those that do know, Transformers Zone is basically the last G1 related franchise animation wise right, to the original Transformers. That's right, it's the last official animated G1 cartoon based around the original Transformers. I'm not lying. Now, there's two more that came out before this, but those were mostly. In Magnas, us, and in in magazines, Japanese magazines that printed stories and stuff. <coughs> but officially, Transformers Zone, animation-wise, was the last animated venture for G1. While well, all, while well, the last two were Magna-based and magazine in comic magazine based. But you probably wonder what I mean by controversy. Well, we all pretty much know that these three here, Headmasters, Super God Master Force, and Victory Victory, if you will, are the la are the only are the yeah, are the three only um well basically they're the last well the what I'm trying to say What I'm trying to say here is these are actually the last, or not the last, but the only three um, Japan anime animation continuations, if you will, of G1 in complete series format. In other words, each is a um, guessing. 30, well, 35 for Headmasters, 52 for Super God Master Force, and 37 for Victory. <clears throat> so essentially, you're looking at, let's see, 87 on these two together. Essentially, you're looking at 124 episodes continuation, 124 episode continuation in Japan only, which was finally released to the U.S. in its original language and format of G1. Now, <coughs> for some of you that don't know this, again, like I said, Zone, animation-wise, was the last animated G1 show or series. However, because of the fact, according to Ball Matrix, from what he said, and from what other people have said, other sources, due to the fact that sales for certain toys of that portion of the G1 franchise didn't sell as well as they should. Um, the planned animated series of Zone was reduced to just one episode. That's right, to one 
23 to 30 minute OVA episode, which was, as we all know, direct to video in Japan. That's what it was. Now, pretty much in the form of the first Transformer series, we had human characters and allies involved. In this case, with Transformer Zone, we had characters of a Kane, the human characters of Kane and Akira. Now, Kane, of course, had a little pet, whatever it was, rabbit or whatever, called Isamu, I think, or Esmu. I can't pronounce it. Anyway, he had this little pet, if you will. Now, here's what's unique about this. Well, not unique, but here's... Well, he, well, here's what's unique about this. The Transformers, this one episode, firmly was establishing what a su the series was going to be. But again, unfortunately, due to the fact that the toys didn't sell well, it was only reduced to an OVA. The unique thing, like I said, was, the uniqueness also about this was it was a continuation of victory. So you would think Shout Factory would have enough sense to say, you know what? We do have one episode that does connect with this from Zone. We do have that Zone episode that connects with this. Um, let's put it on there as a bonus. But did they do that? No, they didn't. And that is why a lot of people pretty much are petitioning. I know that sounds crazy, but they are petitioning in for Zone, the emailing, the the faxing, whatever you want to call it, the texting, whatever, they are basically asking Shout Factory to bring out Transformers Zone to DVD. The only problem about that is Transformers Zone, like I said, is a 23 to 30 minute episode OVA. Now, that has, now I'm not saying that one episode has, been, has ever been released onto DVD. They have. You take a look at the dollar store, they've done it. But you see, the problem is, this OVA is only going to be one DVD. And you know, pretty much I'm wondering, well, what's the point? There's going to be no point, right? Well, to me, and I'm sure any other Transformers fans out there, there is a point to it. That point is at least you're giving us all the complete, you're giving us the complete animated version of G1, from what we've seen here in the U.S., to Headmasters, Super God Master Force, and Victory, you're giving us the entire set. Again, like I said, you are they, are they are basically giving us the entire set, and that's what we want. But here comes the controversy, and I know it took me a while just to get to it, but here's the controversy. And I apologize for taking this long to get to it. I was trying to give you guys a little bit of a background on this. You see, the toys for these characters did come out in Japan, and I think very briefly here in the U.S. The three main Autobot characters and stuff. But here's where the controversy comes in. The controversy centers around the human characters. Now, Kane pretty much has been established as a boy. But when you look at him, you say he looks more like a girl than he does a boy. But they want to, they want to establish he's a boy, so be it. But then, here comes the other controversy. Akira. Akira. And to me, this is what's holding off on Shout Factory doing this. You see, Akira, despite how you look at it, a lot of people, there are some that when they look at the official bio, or not the official bio, but look at something that says the official bio, 
Some of the official bios, if you will, depending on where you read them from, either Japan, either they're from TF Source, whatever, the bios, some of the bios say Akira is a boy. Okay, that's fine. But then, there are some bios, if you will, that say Akira is a girl. And there's actually a promotional artwork, I think, courtesy of the Magna or something, that shows Akira as a reddish brown haired girl. I'm not lying. I am not lying. The promotional artwork even shows Akira as a girl. So, pretty much, Akira, depending on how you look at it, depend, from what I understand, a lot of, there's a lot of sources that pretty much confirm she's a girl, while there are other sources, like some official bios here and there, Japan, or wherever, that say Akira is a boy. And I think that's why they haven't brought Zone to the U.S., even if it's for a DVD release. The reason being is because you got Akira, you got the gender of Akira kind of mixed up. You don't know whether or not Akira is a boy or a girl. Now a lot of people might say, well, Saban did the same thing with Power Rangers. Saban messed up the fact that some of the Yellow Rangers were boys in some of the, in some of the uh, English dubbings and English reenactings, if you will. Pretty much the Yellow Ranger was a boy. Yeah, I get that. I totally do. I read up on it. I know that. But when they brought Power Rangers here to the U.S., they made the Yellow Rangers, some of them, girls. Why? Because they pretty much conceive, and I'm not trying to be mean here, the yellow is a girl's color. Just saying. There have been occasions where they have made the Yellow Ranger exactly what he is in Japan, a boy. But you see... I think that's where Shout Factory might be a little worried because we don't have mask hiding a mask hiding Akira's face. We don't. And the way Akira is presented when you first see him, when you first see him, or when you first see him, her, whatever you want to call her, or you want to call Akira, they're catching butterflies. And the way the shorts are brought up. I mean, I mean, if that does not tell you this Akira was meant to be a, bo a girl, and then the way they kind of act and talk, especially presenting a flower at the end, it's like, come on, honestly? What else are we supposed to think? The truth is, in my opinion, I think this is one of the things that's holding off zone coming here to the US even for a direct to DVD release. But here's what's funny though. Some per some person or some individuals have uploaded Transformers Zone, the one episode, the OVA, onto the YT, onto YouTube. And then there's somebody, can't think of the name right now, I'll provide the link down below, that uploaded a very well done English dub version of Zone. And the voice they got for Akira is a girl. I mean, go figure on that, folks. And to me, I think that's where the controversy lies. The controversy lies in the fact for Transformers Zone that the reason and that the, the reason they have not gotten a release like these three have here in the US. It's due to the fact that they're not sure about the gender of Akira and a few other things. I mean, there, there might even be some people that might mistake Kane for a girl, too. Who knows? You see, and I think that's what's holding them back. And I'm pretty sure Brian Ward and those at Shout Factory would love nothing more than to get Zone released here in the U.S. But because of the fact that it's not been established whether Akira's a boy or a girl, or whether Kane's a boy and a girl, or pretty much a lot of people pretty much figured Kane's, a majority have figured out that pretty much have agreed that Kane's a boy. Hold on for a second.